For challenge number four, we're going to make a circle logo to put on a coffee cup or a tumbler that kind of mimics the Starbucks looking logo. And I'm going to show you how to do this with some shapes and we're going to put some words on it. And so the first part we're going to do, we're going to need a circle basic shape. One of the things you want to check on is up here that your start and end numbers are both zero. If you do not, you may end up with a piece of pie when you try to draw your circle. So we'll uh, change to green. And as you can see up here, your fill color is green. And we're going to hold control shift while we drag out our circle. And just make sure it is symmetrical. Sometimes you can end up with an ellipse, but if you move it around just a little bit, it'll snap to a circle. And we'll go back to our selection tool. Up at the top, we'll change this to inches. We'll lock it. And then we'll change this to 3.75 inches, which should be good for most cups. And we press the number 3 key, we'll zoom in all the way. Now I'll zoom back out just a notch by using the minus key. And we're going to do this with a variety of different circles, so we'll be using different colors until we're finished. That way we can see our circles stacked on top of one another. And so first thing I'm going to do is hit highlight the circle by selecting it. And then I'm going to hit Control D as in duplicate. And it doesn't look like it did anything, but I actually have two circles here now. And I'll move this one over here out of the way. And the reason I'm doing that is I want one circle that is going to maintain my original shape uh, just in case I need it later. And so I'll highlight this again and I'll hit Control D again. And we have another circle. And this time I'll change the color a little bit. So we'll make it uh, bright green. And then if you hold your control shift keys while you adjust the size, it will keep it center. So it will be centered in place. Now if you get it off center, you can also hit control shift A as we did in the previous videos. And as I mentioned, I like to do some repetitive things with you. So I'll be using some of these things. You may say, well, I've already, we've done that in previous video. We already learned that. The best way to retain things is to do them over and over again. And I try to do that and mix it up in different ways so that it does uh, spawn some of the uh, memory retention. And so now that I have that one in place, I'm going to um, hit Control D and duplicate that one. And we'll move it over here out of the way. And as you see, if you move it too quick, quick it will scroll away from you. And now with these two, I'm going to highlight them. I'm going to go to Path and Difference. And in case you didn't notice, when we use Difference, it slices away what is on top. So the, value, so the object that is on top will slice away what's underneath of it. It's not exactly like the Slice tool in Design Space because you're left with other objects uh, when you slice away in Design Space, so you can work with those shapes as well. But in Inkscape, it slices away uh, those uh, uh, whatever is underneath using the object that's on top. So now we'll move this one back into place and now we need to use our alignment tool. So we'll do control shift A and we'll center this horizontally and vertically. And now we'll select only this circle. Control shift is hold, being held down and we'll get us a little bit of a gap here. Try to make it about the same width as that outer ring. Again, we're going to highlight just the inner circle. Control D to duplicate once more. And we'll change the color on this one. We'll go back to green. And we'll hold Control Shift and move that one inward. You don't have to be exact with the sizes. I'm just kind of adjusting it to where it looks right. And so I'll click that one. I'll hold the Shift key and click the second circle. And now we'll do path difference again. And now we have our uh, two rings that we're searching for. And so now it's safe to make them the same color because we're going to uh, leave them as is. And now I'm confident that I don't need this original shape. Uh, I just like to keep those off to the side in case I make a mistake or decide I want to do something different. Uh, it's just always a good idea to make it a copy of something exactly like you start with before you start making changes to it. That way you have it and you can use it for reference or go back to a, a different um, uh, plan with what you're working on. So now we're going to insert uh, the little stars down here on the uh, uh, sides. And so I'll click on the shape tool and up here make sure you select it on the star. And here you can actually change the number of 
corners that you want your star to have. So we're going to go with a standard five point star. I'm going to hold down the control shift key and we'll change this to a different color so we can see it real well. We want to kind of place it in here and then if we click it again we'll get our rotate keys and we can rotate that around to where we want it, to where we think it looks really good. Now we want to have one over here that is exactly like it but an exact mirror image. So when we have this I'm going to hit control D so that I have a duplicate of it and then I can come up here to this which is the flipped object horizontally and it will make an exact mirror copy. It's a little bit different from the mirror or flip image in design space because it will, um, you know, design space flips on its original orientation where uh, Inkscape does more like traditional editing application does where it does the exact flip based on a, a horizontal or vertical axis which is a, a lot better in my opinion. So we need to align these. We'll highlight the two stars and we will um, center them on a horizontal axis so that they are in place and now we need to get them uh, into just the right location. One of the things you can do is grab this ruler up here and you can grab a bar and kind of drag it down and you can see exactly where you're at. So um, to me, for some reason, it looked like this one wasn't lined up exactly right, but it is. As you can see, the little horizontal bar that I pulled down you know, crosses right through the point on both sides. So it is perfect. Uh, it just didn't quite look right to me, but it looks good. And so now we're going to select those two stars and we're going to go to Path and Union so that they are one object. And next we'll select the stars. We'll hold Shift and select that ring. We'll go to Path Difference. And now we have the cutouts for the stars. So now the tricky part. We're going to put the words, uh, I'm going to put my name across here. I'm going to put Troy's Coffee. And we're going to do uh, my name across the top first. And um, I do this with uh, the Arial Black font. And so what we're going to do is curve that inside of there. And um, so we're going to need a circle. And probably should have kept that original circle that I made, but uh, that's okay. We can create another one. And we want to create a symmetrical circle, like I said. Now, one of the things we're going to do with this one that's a little bit different, we'll close our alignment panel for now. We're going to hit Control-Shift-F. And this will open our Fill and Stroke panel. And some of you have had some problems when you draw objects, you don't get a solid object or you only get an outline or sometimes you just don't see it at all, even though it's there. And that's because the fill and stroke may be in uh, bad spots or as far as the settings or uh, the alpha here, this may be turned down. It should be at 255 or the opacity may be turned down. It should be at 100%. So opacity is kind of like transparency, as you can see and uh, alpha is how much it's filled and so we're going to uh, turn off fill and we're going to turn on the stroke that way we get an outline and so now we can move this into place and we're going to center we'll hit control shift a again we'll go horizontal and vertical center and now we want to get this inner circle and hold the control shift keys while we adjust it so that we get it just a little bit uh, so there's a little bit of space just a little gap between the border and the inner, inner circle we're using this as our alignment tool Oops. and so we want to get this and bring it out here we'll adjust our letters to where they fit in there kind of nicely uh, not too big and one of the things I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at my height and everything on my letters. And so they're uh, 34, a little bit less than 35. So I'll go ahead and make those 35 pixels uh, high. That way I know what size to make the ones on the bottom when I do those. So now we're going to click my name. We'll hold shift and click the circle. And do text. Put on path. 
And as you notice before, it drops down here on the lower side, but that's okay. We're going to fix that. And just as before, uh, remember, if you delete the circle, you've lost your path, so you lose your arc. So we have to uh, do a couple things to this first. Uh, one, I'm going to adjust the kerning just a little bit. There's a little bit extra space there, so I'm going to put my cursor in between. I'm going to hold the Alt key and press my left arrow key. And just move these a little bit closer together. They just look like they're a little bit farther apart than I would like them. If yours look okay, you can certainly leave them. And now we're going to click our text and we're going to do text object to path. Now we can move this away. We'll click it twice so that we get our rotate arrows. And remember, when we uh, are rotating that around, we can move it to where our letters touch the bottom of that bounding box on each side, here and here, so that we know that it's level. And we can drop that in there so that it looks real nice. And we can highlight all of that and say center that and put it right dead in the middle. Now remember, we've uh, change this text to a path, but it is still separate objects. So if I look at my node tool, you see those are still separate. And so we want to ungroup those. And then without clicking anything, go to Path Union. And that makes them all one object. We'll select our name, hold Shift, and select this inner circle. Path Difference. Okay, so now we can put this circle over here, and we'll center it horizontally and vertically again, and select it. And this time, we're going to move out here and give us just a little bit of space between that outer circle. And I'm going to show you why here in just a moment. Move this over, and we'll do our word coffee. And again, we want the Arial Black font. We'll switch to our selection tool and we'll make this 35 pixels so it's the same as the top word. And now we're going to hold Shift and select both and go Text, Put on Path. Now the difference is we want this curved on the inside. And so what we're going to do is select that. Actually, we're going to select the circle. And we're going to flip the circle vertically. And that will move your word to the inside. So if you notice, their words are all jammed together now because we're on the inner circle. Now the reason it puts it on the inner circle and we can't align the top letters with, uh, say, the, a circle that's small like we had before is because it does the alignment in the path according to the bottom of the letters. So we're going to put our cursor in here and use our Alt right arrow key just to get a little bit of space in there and now we'll go path object path we'll rotate this around and look at those top letters and make sure they're even with the bounding box so that it's level now we're finished with this uh, line circle that we were using, so we can get rid of that now. And again, uh, remember this is a path, but these are separate objects. So we're going to go to Path, Ungroup, and then we'll do Path, Union. And if I use my node editor, you can see that those are uh, one object now. So now we can center that by selecting it all and clicking the uh, center. We will select the call word coffee, hold shift and select the circle, path difference. And now we have separate objects here still. So we have this outer ring, we have this inner ring. So we'll select all of that and we'll do path union. And now it is all one object. We're going to click File, Save As. 
We'll save this as challenge four as a plain SVG. Now we'll switch over to design space and upload our image we just created. We'll insert it into our project. And if you'll remember in a previous uh, challenge, I said that SVGs don't uh, typically import in the design space of the exact size. So we're going to check that and it imported quite a bit larger. So we'll change this to 3.75 inches. And there is our logo. And if we hit go, it will cut as expected and we can apply it to a mug. And in the next challenge, I'm going to show you how to make uh, some images inside of this as well as trace. Uh, some images to be put in there uh, as well. So look forward to challenge number five. So if you're able to complete this okay, take a screenshot of your design space uh, with your project in there, post it on Facebook, and tag me in your post, and I would appreciate it. To recap the things we learned in this video, we inserted symmetrical circles, and we used control shift to adjust the size of those circles while keeping them centered. We also use the Control shift a key to open the Align and Distribute panel. We use Control d to duplicate objects. We align multiple objects. We created text objects, of course. We use Control shift f to open the Fill and Stroke panel. And we discuss the Alpha and Opacity settings, which must be turned all the way up, or you won't get a filled object when you create those basic objects. We turned off the fill and turned on stroke on that circle that we used to make our arch text. So we, that was how we got that outline of the circle rather than a solid object. We applied the text to that path to make it an arch. We adjust the kerning or the spacing of the letters. And uh, remember we had to decrease the spacing when it was on the outside of the arch, but we had to increase it when it was on the inside. And we had to, uh, in order to get the word on the inside, remember we had to click the circle and flip it vertically to make the word go on the inside. And so we converted all that text to a path. We used union to sort of weld the text to make it one object. We rotated and leveled that text like we did in the previous challenge. Uh, it's actually text converted to a path object, but uh, I used the term text just because you know it was a word. And uh, just always want to make sure you understand the difference between a text object and a path. So uh, we also inserted the star, we rotated it, we duplicated it, and we flipped it, uh, the second star, to be a mirrored object. We, we aligned it, and then we used that ruler that we pulled down from the top to make sure it was truly aligned. We used uh, objects to difference or slice away parts of other shapes. We did that with the stars, with the circles, and also with the words. We saved that as a plain SVG and we imported it into Design Space. So again, if you were able to complete this uh, challenge, I know I went pretty quickly. This one was a little bit longer. Most of it was uh, duplicate uh, steps compared to what we did in previous challenges, but we did some things in different ways. And I did introduce a new couple new topics, but uh, this was uh, you know a little bit more difficult challenge, but I did want to go a little bit faster since we were uh, doing some of the same things. So if you're able to complete this, post your screenshots out on Facebook and tag me in your post. If my video has been helpful to you, please subscribe to my channel. And after you subscribe, be sure to click the little gear and check this box so that you'll receive an email notification when I upload a new video. You can also help support my channel by making a small donation on patreon.com slash Troy Young.